All right, let's talk about the OnePlus Nord. This has got to be one of the most interesting phones for me that's gonna come out this year, not just for the phone itself, but the whole idea behind it. So when the OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro launched, there were rumors that there would be a third variant called the OnePlus 8 Lite. It didn't come out. And then after that, people are saying that there was gonna be a cheap thing called the OnePlus Z. Didn't come out. And now we have it. OnePlus has officially stated it's gonna be called the OnePlus Nord. Now, if you look at their Instagram page, it's like the only marketing stuff they have out so far on it, but it is clearly different from the regular OnePlus stuff, right? OnePlus marketing materials normally focus on like speed and performance. Like it's normally for this very tech savvy audience, a very feature demanding audience. This stuff on the new OnePlus Nord material feels different. It feels lighter. It feels like it's for a younger crowd. And the big thing, the big feature is really price. Now, I don't know how I feel about them using teal, which is the best color in the world, to represent a cheaper, inferior product line, right? Teal should be associated with the best stuff in the world, not red. So if you look at the rumored specs, it looks pretty decked out, right? The processor isn't the fastest thing out there, but nothing really sticks out as being inadequate. There's no wireless charging supposedly, but the overall phone specs are on point. The thing with the OnePlus 8 and the 8 Pro phones, the focus of this phone, <laughs> the focus of these phones has always been speed, right? You see it in the marketing campaigns. With the OnePlus Nord, it really seems focused on price. And that's become a thing. Like if you look at OnePlus's pricing over the years, I've talked about this in every single one of my recent OnePlus videos, their pricing has creeped up over the years. And you really see it in the comments, right? Every year, there's just an increasing number of comments from you guys that are like, the pricing is just insane. It's bonkers. How is this stuff eight, $900, $1,000? they've become really expensive. So for OnePlus to kind of reset and go back to the roots of these inexpensive phones, it's something special. So here we are at the cusp of yet another OnePlus phone launch, but this time it's supposed to be priced below 500 bucks. My guess is it's gonna be between like 350 and 400 bucks, depending on the region and exchange rate, but that's my personal guess. It's gonna be relatively inexpensive. There is, however, a caveat to all of this. I mean, it all sounded too good to be true, right? A OnePlus phone for $350. The stipulation is availability. It's gonna launch in India and Europe first, and then later a limited beta program in North America. So if you live in the US or Canada and you want this thing, the moment it's available, when it does come out for that limited beta thing, you got to get on it right away because I think it's gonna move super fast. And it kind of makes sense in terms of their launch strategy, like to hit up India and Europe first, because though like they just have such a strong fan base there, people love them there. So it makes sense, hit the, the, the tried and tested markets first, and then expand elsewhere. Like India already has a hardcore fan base for OnePlus's regular priced phones. I can only imagine what it'll be like for a cheap OnePlus phone. It'll be on another level. So here's the thing. The question that I feel like everyone's gonna have is, how is this gonna be so cheap? How can they make a $350 to $400 phone with those type of specs, right? I don't care what kind of economies of scale are happening. That is a super inexpensive phone for what you're getting. And the profit margin is gonna be crazy thin. So here's my theory. I think just the, the, the parent company or the sister or brother company, Oppo, BBK, whatever it is, I think they're gonna foot the bill. I think they're gonna eat the cost and do whatever it takes to make the OnePlus Nord happen. Now, the question is why? Right? Why get into the business of making smartphones with very slim margins? Why get into the business of doing the whole thing over again? Right? I feel like they did this in 2014. Are they gonna just bump up the price year and year again? Like what's, what's the end game here? I think that OnePlus has gone to a stage, it's not just OnePlus, the whole smartphone industry has gone to the point where hardware has become, it's just become less valuable. It, it's gone to the point where ecosystems and, and like, you, 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 the best thing is to get customers hooked onto a brand the way that Apple does it, right? You have your phones, but you have a million services to sell them. You have a million other products to sell them. OnePlus right now is in a position where all they can do is sell hardware, like the current OnePlus. I think OnePlus Nord is designed to build a user base, to, to expand their user base as wide as possible so they can start selling services and products to just to, to keep the thing going, to keep the business model going. So, I mean, this is all speculative, right? But if you think about it, they're not gonna just repeat exactly what they did with the first OnePlus phones, right? They're not gonna, you know, the next year when the OnePlus Nord 2 comes out, the Nord 3, they're not just gonna creep up the price the, the, 
what would be the point of that? That'd be the that'd be super boring. I feel like Carl, Carl Pay, the guy that's behind this whole thing, he's a smart dude. He loves he loves startups. And I feel like this is his plan. It's just like you you grow OnePlus to be more than OnePlus could ever be with just their premium brand. Because this isn't just another OnePlus product. This doesn't sit on the shelf with the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro. This is a completely new branch for OnePlus. So we've seen phones like the Paco phones and Redmi phones from Xiaomi that do something similar in the sense that they're like a offshoot, lower budget line of phone. But the OnePlus Nord feels, it feels different. I feel like it'll actually, you know what? Forget what I feel. I wanna know what you guys think because like personally, I'm clearly interested in this phone. I think it's going to do well. I, I'm, and I'm really curious to see what the impact of a phone that's priced like this does in the current landscape. But what do you guys think? Do you think this will do well? Are you interested? If you're in India, if you're in Europe, are you going to pick this up? Because it's from a North American's perspective that's sitting here hoping that we can get them. This seems like an incredible phone for the money. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it. Subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.